Hey everybody. Um, this is the first part of the videos to make the um, 3D snowflakes. And they're different from the ones that we made last year. Um, and I found this really beautiful um, iridescent origami paper, which I thought would be lovely to make these with. So um, the, the snowflake we're gonna make is this one. However, I'm using gonna be using the smaller paper because I think it makes a sturdier snowflake. But you see, I used a bunch of different colors of the iridescent paper. Um, I made up already um, the six, six of these parts of the snowflake, but I'll show you how to make one of them. And then I'll show you how to put them together in the snowflake. So first, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your square of paper and you're gonna fold it in half diagonally. And I found the best way to do it with this particular paper because one, it's slippery when the shiny sides are together, but also it, um, it doesn't fold totally evenly unless you sort of slide your fingers down this way. If you try to fold it the other way, it kind of, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, it sort of gets caught up because the paper's a little bit, it's not smooth the way, you know, regular like copier paper would be. So all you need to do is fold it in half diagonally like this. Then on the folded edge, what you're going to do is you're going to draw a line. So you're going to need a pencil and you're going to need a ruler. Make sure you got a ruler with centimeter marks on it for the next part of this. But you're just going to make a line a little bit in. I'd say that's about how much? About maybe two or three millimeters from the edge. But you can just eyeball it. Remember, it's going to be doubled. So that forms this um, spine, the, the, the middle part of this, um, of each arm of the snowflake. So you're just gonna draw, draw a line this way, just down, just make sure it's straight, okay? Then what you're gonna do is, you're gonna get, find your eight centimeters, which is from this line, to this line. And you wanna make sure this line lines up with the line that you've drawn and this lines up with the edge of the, um, of the snowflake. So, and it's important to get this pretty much right just because you want to have um, the right number of these little, I don't know what you wanna call them, wings on the snowflake, I guess. So now I'm gonna make a mark at each centimeter point. So I've got eight there, I'm not gonna make a mark there. I'm gonna make a mark at um, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Then I'm gonna start with the long side and I'm gonna draw a line that's parallel using my little dot here between the edge and the line that we first drew on the spine of the snowflake. So make one, two. If it's not perfect, that's okay. But you wanna make them pretty, pretty parallel. Otherwise your, your loops are gonna be a tad wonky. Um, there. there and there. So you see how I've drawn this? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these lines just up to the other line that we drew. You don't wanna cut into that because you need this to support your each arm of your snowflake. And my suggestion with this is to um, start with the longer one and hold your snowflake together. So again, remember I told you that these shiny sides are a little slippery. And what I would suggest you do is don't go to the end of the scissors and end it on the line. End it, end your cut 
sort of in the middle of the scissors because this paper is a little bit delicate. If you go like this and end it on the edge, it's going to tear it a little bit at the end. I found that out the hard way. So then you just move your fingers down. Be careful not to cut your fingers, but hold tight to the um, paper so it doesn't slip. Okay, it's easier on the shorter ones to not um, end at the end of the scissors, end your cut at the end of the scissors. Like that, like that, like that, like this. Now, now what you're going to need is some glue and grab one of your wider, the wider paintbrush from your emojis. Remember the emojis you did last time? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, grab a, you can grab a piece of paper. I'm just grabbing this little paint tray. I'm going to put a little bit of glue in the paint tray. I'm using this sticky glue, but you could use Elmer's glue too if you want to. I'm gonna put a dollop in there. Um, and what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna start gluing these pieces together. Now, for the first one, this top one, keep your pencil handy, and I'll show you why. It's, it's a lot easier to sort of, it, these are diff, a little bit um, tricky just to start it off, because you wanna make sure this doesn't flatten. So a nice way to make sure it stays round instead of flattening on the edges is to use your pencil as a guide. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my glue and I'm going to put it on this corner like this. And the paintbrush makes it so much easier and you get less all over your fingers. But this is the trickiest one to do. You wanna try to get it right in the middle and you want to hold it down. So I'm holding the, the edges down and you see it comes undone. So you might have to put a little bit more glue on. Depending, It depends on the type of glue you use. So just, you have to figure that one out. But here, I'm gonna try to keep this centered on itself. What's nice about it when it's first starting to gl be glued is you can slide it around a little bit in, to get it into the right place. Okay, so that's your first one. Then you're going to go, you're going to skip this next strip right here, and you're going to go to the third strip. Another trick on this is to make sure that you fold these always do them the same way. So I'm putting the left side on top of the right side. And what you're going to do is you're going to put glue on here. And just get all the corners because that's going to be key here. And to make it wide enough that you can get the corner on the other side. And I'm going to put the two top corners together and hold it down. Make sure that it's really stuck. All right, that the that this corner of the one that you've put over the top, that that one's actually stuck to the bottom piece. Okay, and sometimes you gotta hold it for a little bit. So now I'm gonna go, now I'm gonna skip one and I'm gonna do this on the next one. So. Again, make sure you put enough glue on that you get, this will dry clear, so don't worry about that, about putting it down too far. But you wanna make sure that you get the, this corner here. The longer ones are a lot easier to do than the short ones. Okay, so hold it down, make sure that you've got the whole edge down. You can always go back later and um, add a little bit of glue underneath the corners if the corner um, gets, gets loose. Okay, now I'm doing it down this side on this one. Making sure I've got enough glue on and then lining this up. 
and then holding it down. So there you go. Now you're gonna repeat that prop process on the other side. This one's gonna be the most difficult one because it's shorter, but again, make sure that you do it consistently. So the left over the right or the right over the left, but you do it the same way for each one. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue here on this. And I think the contrast between the sort of the white and the iridescent is sort of pretty. Um, I think one sets the other one off. The white sort of sets the iridescent off. So I'm gonna hold that there like that. Oh, you see how I didn't quite get that edge? So I can just go back in and put a little bit of glue on it and we're set. Okay, then I'll do it to the next one. And then you're gonna have to make sure you let it dry. You wanna make sure they're all completely dry before you start to assemble them into the snowflake. So that's the part that requires some patience. There's that. I don't have to do all of these to show you, but you can see that that's how, that's how this is gonna work, right? So now, in order to put these together, I just did it, I've been playing around with the patterns, but remember, you wanna have them all going in the same direction. So you see how I've got the longer one on the bottom right, so I've put them all that way. And what I could do it half pink, half yellow. I'm going to alternate them. And again, what you do is you put some glue on the bottom corner, see? And now I'm going to stick this to this, lining up the, the, coin, the corners. And then I'm just going to repeat that all the way around. Oh, I almost lost my glue. So there. Helps if you just line all of your snowflake pieces up the right in the right direction. So all you need to do is put on the glue, grab the piece you want, and stick it together. Okay, put the glue. Grab the piece I want. I want pink now. Stick it together. Put on the glue, see? And the trickiest part is just getting all of these pieces glued together on each arm. Once you've gotten that done, then you wanna, um, then it's easy to put it together. So you're gonna squeeze it and just make sure it's really dry and then you just fluff it out. Make sure you've got it the right way. And then you can take the one in the middle above it and you can hang it like that. It's not dry, so it's not gonna work. So let's do this again. And you'll see. Um, yep, here. You've gotta let it dry. So just hold on to it, let it dry like that. And then you will have your your snowflake, which is pretty cool. So there we have it. Enjoy making your snowflakes. Hey everybody, um, here are the instructions for making the second 3D snowflake, which is this one, which is only made with two pieces of the larger iridescent paper. And the tricky part, well, there are a couple of little tricky parts, but nothing super, super hard. Um, what you're gonna do is, you are going to fold your paper in half diagonally, and remember the trick I had before of lining up the corner and then sliding your fingers down and getting to the other corners. That works better with the texture on this paper. This time you can fold the, um, the dull sides together, all right? So now you're gonna fold it again this way. So you're gonna take the triangle and you're gonna fold it this way, all right? And now you've got two sides that have folds, one that one fold, one with two folds, and then the sides that have the open edges. So 
You're gonna go this, take the side with the open edges, grab your scissors, and you're gonna kind of make a sort of a flower shape, but you can keep this edge straight. You're gonna curve it in and you kind of want it to line up with this point. There. And you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. They don't have to be perfect. But what I'm gonna do is just make sure I, I cut them so that they fall off, the edges fall off, rather than pulling them, because that never quite works. These are almost ready. Now I'm gonna save these pieces, and I'll show you why. Because you see the little, circles that I made in the middle. It kind of helps hold everything down. I sort of figured that out by trial and effort. You could either make a circle or like I did on that one, a little square, but you can use these, these pieces that you've done. Now, if you're going to, when, if you want both sides to look exactly perfect, what I would do is fold your second piece of paper and then just trace this edge so that you've got at least the outside edges about the same. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna make two cuts following this curve. You're gonna make one about here, like this. And then you're gonna make another one that's smaller, right there. And then you're gonna do the same on the other side. So again, sort of follow your curve. But do not, they do not touch each other because otherwise you're just gonna cut your paper in half and you will not have a snowflake. You sort of follow this one a little bit. So there, now you have your flower. You unfold it and you lay it down flat on your shiny side up, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a little circle doesn't have to be perfect. It could be it's sort of an oval. Doesn't really matter. And I'm going to take that and I'm going to paint a little bit of glue on this with my paintbrush. Show you why that's important later. Now, I'm going to take quite a bit of glue and stick it right in the middle of the snowflake, right where the crosses crisscross. Okay. And then what I will do is I'm taking the middle piece. See, there are three sections. I'm taking the middle section and I'm folding it over, getting it right to where all of those corners go together. I'm gonna do this with the second one. Now, this is not gonna to wanna to stay down. So you might need to get somebody's help in holding it down, holding the pieces down or you figure out ways of doing it with your fingers, but you're gonna take the middle piece on each one of these petals. Now I'm gonna hold it down like this, oops, and I'm gonna grab my circle with the glue on it, and I'm gonna, oh, that didn't work. But what you wanna do is get these all these pieces down and then put that circle down on top because then, you're not covered with glue, or hopefully you're not covered with glue. And you can really hold this down over all of your bits. I'm gonna pull this one out a little bit because it's kind of overlapped a little too much. And you can hold this down and let it dry. Now you're gonna have to hold it down for a little bit. And what you could do is take a small rock, take something that's a little heavy and put it down in the middle to hold it. But trust me, you have to hold it down for a little while. Now, if the middle just sort of pops up, you can always stick some glue underneath, but that's a little tricky. I would use a Q-tip and do that. And you're gonna make two of them. And once they've dried, so I'm gonna put this one aside, hopefully that won't pop up. So now I've got the two that I already made and I'm gonna put them back to back, but I am going to overlap them so that, see, 
the, that the, the petals overlap each other. I don't want them to line up perfectly for two reasons. One, because they're not exactly the same because they I cut them both by hand, so they're not exactly the same. And two, I think it looks really nice. It looks sort of like a flower. So you'll take your glue, put a dollop of it in the middle like this, and then Line it up. Oops, make sure that these two circles are sort of lined up, that the centers are lined up. And then let them dry. Well, that's not quite right either. Luckily, you can wiggle it around a little bit, but you want to do it pretty quickly. There you go. And now I'm going to let it dry like this, and I have my 3D snowflake. And you can hang it from the top if you want to. And it would look really pretty. I would do it on something like fishing line, or even um, you could do it with thread. Just poke a little teeny hole in with a um, with a needle or a pin. And that's our second 3D snowflake. And the last one I'll show you is how to make the flat snowflakes. I gave you guys some extra of the um, larger paper um, because I'm going to show you how to fold it so you can make your own six pointed. Um, snowflakes and I've given I'll give you some templates you'll see hey everybody welcome to the tutorial on how to do the flat two-dimensional snowflakes uh, the key to this is the way you fold the paper actually so you get a six-pointed um, snowflake uh, and you'll have in your packet, you'll have this instruction sheet which shows you how to do this, but I'll also show you, and this will be just a, a good reminder. Uh, there'll also be some templates, which are ways of cutting it out to get a certain type of pattern, um, and I'll show you those some of those patterns later. Um, but the first thing you want is you've got some origami paper, the iridescent variety, um, and I put in a couple of pieces of colored plain origami paper. Um, just be aware that sometimes when you fold the iridescent origami paper, it doesn't fold. Uh, it's like almost like part of it sort of comes off on the textured part. So just be very careful when you fold it. But if you just want to use regular copying paper and make perfect, make good squares to use for um, your cutouts, just take a regular piece, take one corner, and bring it over to the other side, and just line up. Line it up straight, and that will give you a pretty good square. And then you cut this off right here, okay? You just cut this piece off. And now you'll have a square piece of paper. I've got one cut out already. So you open it up, you fold it in half lengthwise like this, and make sure you really do uh, nice creases. That will help you. Um, the only time you don't is in the third step of this, and I'll show you why, because it's a little fiddly. So you fold it in half this way, and then that's your folded edge. Then you fold it in half this way. And when you do this, this is just to get the middle line, because you're going to be working around that middle line. So here's your middle line right here. And what you're going to do is try to make it cross so that it's even on both sides. And this is where you don't want to push down too hard. You sort of want to get it so you see how this is about here. I'm not going to push that down super hard yet because I want to make sure that I've gotten it even. And the way I can tell is if I look here and see there's a lot of space there, so I need, I need to adjust it. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here, push it down, do the same thing over here, I'm trying to keep this little point here, and that is better. Okay, so now I have my um, triangle like this, and then I'm going to take it and I'm going to fold it down the middle again and make sure I've gotten this right. Yeah. Oh, wait, no, I'm going to fold it this way. I'm going to fold it this way. So if you look at it, 
you see that hold on. these corners get a little funny. If you have a problem with it, I would get like a small pin or something like that that you can fold it around because when the paper gets really thick, it doesn't fold as well as you'd like it to. And there's a little piece sticking out, but that'll be okay. And what I'll do is I'm going to cut it. along, which line am I going to cut it along? Sort of want to cut it along right at the bottom here. Hold on, how do we do this? Yeah, like this, from this corner down at a slight angle. This isn't rocket science, it's not perfect, but it'll work. So now, what you do is you take this and you decide which one of these you want to do. Now, I want to show you what some of them are. This one is the forest one. You see here, it comes out, it looks like trees. This one is the, di is this the diamonds one? Yes, this is the diamonds one here. This one is the lace one right here. This is the flower one which is here, you see it's a lot of the zigzags. I think this is another lace one. This one is the heart one, which I think is really pretty. And this one is fun. This is the snowman, which is this one. Okay, you see how it looks like a bunch of snowmen? So I'm just gonna do the lace one right now. So I've got this, and I'm gonna trace this. Like we got this bit at the end, then you've got, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, you're just kind of matching a little bit what they've got here. And the thing you have to keep in mind is your main folded edge you do not want to cut everything off of that because you want to, you don't want it to fall apart. So I've got this sketched on. Now, if you plan on making a bunch of uh, snowflakes that are all exactly the same, what I would do is fold up a bunch of these triangles, get them all ready to go. Then what you do is you sketch it on one of these, leave it like this, don't open it after you've cut it, and just lay it on top of your other triangles and um, trace where you've cut and that way you'll get a bunch that look similar. So you're going to cut out these sections and the trick with curves for cutting out is to try to do it by moving the paper not the scissors and then wherever you've got straight lines you can do that. You want to sort of see if you need to cut a little teeny bit more to get them all undone. There you go. Then you also don't like with the um, with the three D ones. Don't end at the end of the scissors. So try to end your cut sort of in the middle of the scissor blades. Because if you go to the end of the scissors, you're going to rip it. There we go. There's that. Cut off the bottom. It doesn't really matter if it hasn't folded absolutely perfectly. It'll still work, I promise. I'll show you when I get this finished. Woo! These scissors are a little bit big for doing this, but they will work. pretty thick and that's why it's sort of um, coming slightly. You see how it's feathered a little bit there. If you want to make that more even, you can just go back in and fix it. You know, just be careful at the, the points.
where it goes together. So, so now what you would do is you take your other triangle, you'd lay this on top of it, and then just trace out if you want to make a bunch of uh, snowflakes that match. But now you can open it up, and there you have your lace pattern snowflake. If you want to make it flat, I would lay it underneath something flat, uh, something heavy, like a big book, um, you know, something along those lines, um, or put a book on top of it that's nice and flat and then put something heavy on top of that, a sack of flour, um, you know, if you can think of something and leave it there for a little bit and then you've got your, your flat paper snowflakes. Enjoy creating and I'd love to see pictures. Bye.